In every pattern, you will find something called gauge. And if you've never come across that word before, we're going to talk about it. So we're going to talk about what is gauge and why is it so important? First off, let's talk about the time you may have crocheted a garment and it ended up being too small or too big. That has to do with your gauge. Whenever we talk about matching gauge, we're really talking about sizing your fabric. Now there are two ways to check your gauge. You can start your project and then measure your stitches when there's enough fabric, or you can make a simple square of fabric before starting your, your project to check the gauge. Most designers, including myself, will suggest making a gauge swatch. That way you don't have to undo all that hard work if you were starting a larger garment. At the beginning of your pattern, there will be something called a gauge. It's usually by a four by four inch square, which means we'll wanna make our gauge swatch. We're just making a square of fabric. We'll wanna make it slightly larger than four by four inches because we don't wanna catch these edges as part of our gauge count. It's better to do the gauge in the center of a swatch versus going out to the edges. So once we make our swatch in the stitches that the pattern recommends, for this one, this, these are just simple double crochet stitches. Now we are going to go ahead and check the gauge. Now I do have this nifty little tool that once I place it on here, this is a four by four inch or 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters. And I can place this really cool gauge checker inside here, making sure that my gauge watch is big enough and I can count how many stitches by how many rows. So this is really nifty, but if you don't have this, that's okay. You can go ahead and just use any type of fabric tape measure or ruler, and I can simply place this on here and I can count how many stitches per four inches and then how many rows I have for four inches. And that is how you know what your gauge is for this swatch. Once you have your gauge, let's talk about how to adjust it. So what happens if your gauge is off? Now there's a couple things that can happen. First off, your item probably won't look right. It will either start size larger or smaller, and you might use more or less yarn than the pattern calls for. Your gauge will affect all of those things. So if our gauge is off widthwise, so we're talking our stitches, if we're talking our stitches and how to adjust that, we are going to go ahead and pull out some crochet hooks. When the width is off, the easiest way to fix this is to adjust by crochet hook. This is very normal. Your gauge very seldom, I mean, sometimes you get lucky, but quite often is not the same as the designers. So you'll need to adjust the width of your gauge swatch by switching your crochet hooks. If you have too many stitches in a four inch area, you'll want to try going to a larger hook. This will spread out the stitches over the four inches and that will help adjust to meet the gauge. If you have too few stitches within that four inch area, this will result in something being too baggy. You'll want to try a smaller hook that will tighten the stitches for the width and give you more stitches per inch. Now what happens if our height is off? So that means our row count is off. This one's a bit more tricky, but I have some suggestions for you. When it comes to the height, this is where it's more about tension versus hook. If your width is correct, you've got the right hook size. If your height is off, we're going to talk about a couple ways to fix that. The first thing you want to look at is the angle at which you hold your crochet hook. There are several different ways to hold it. Some people have a pencil hold. Some people do the, uh, the knife hold. That really doesn't matter. It's more about the angle of your hook. Our goal is to be parallel to our project. So when we're crocheting, we want the hook to be the same as our project. But some people will crochet where they tend to rotate clockwise, and this will create a higher stitch. The reason why is when we are at this angle and we pull up our loop, we quite often are pulling it up a bit higher because of the angle of our hook and that will make the stitch taller. So if your stitch is too tall, just check and see how you crochet, and you might just need to adjust the angle of your hook to get the right height of the stitch. Now, if your stitch is short, make sure that you're not going counterclockwise, and that will cause this loop 
when we enter our stitch to be tighter. We're not pulling it up as much before we finish that stitch. So unless you're going to bring your hook back down that pulls it to the right height, we'll have to adjust for that too. So the first thing is to check is how you hold your hook. What angle is your hook at? And that is an easy adjustment to make. It just takes a little bit of practice, but that can help with the height of your stitch. Now here's what to do if you have checked the angle of your hook and you're saying, I'm perpendicular. I'm really good on the angle of my hook, so my stitch is still too tall or still too short. What else could be going on? This is where we're going to talk about the golden crochet loop. It's often called the golden crochet loop because it's just a little term that is the magic little stitch there, the yarn over it that can adjust this. So when it comes to the golden crochet loop, what we're talking about is when we enter our stitch and we do our first yarn over and pulling that loop up. This will affect the height of our stitch. This loop right here often will. If we're pulling up too high and giving it too much space, we will find that our stitch will be much higher than if we were to not give it as much space. And if our stitch is feeling too short, that means we might be what's called a yanker and we aren't coming up high enough. We're just yanking that through and then quickly finishing that stitch before we're allowing some space into that loop and then it causes a shorter stitch. This is what can really affect the height. If our angle is correct, we definitely want to look at the golden crochet loop and simply adjust that one loop, that one loop right here before we finish our stitch, whether we need to pull it up more or if we're pulling it too, too high, we want to tighten that down. And this is really all about our tension and our flow when it comes to crochet. So that's the other way we can adjust our height. Now let's talk about hooks and how they might be affecting our gauge. There are so many wonderful hooks on the market and they all work in different ways. We have metal to acrylic to wood and each one can operate in a different way. Sometimes when we're working with yarn, it might catch a bit more on wood. It might not glide or slide as much depending on the type of fiber that we're using that it might glide better on something metal. But once again, that can affect our gauge. So the other thing you can do is you can adjust the brand of the hook. Now, the thing that you don't want to do is adjust the type of hook mid pattern. You want to stick with the same hook the entire project to make sure that your gauge stays the same. If you're not sure what hook you like best, I suggest getting a few of each and playing with them and seeing what you do. You could make a gauge swatch using the same amount of stitches, but three different styles of hooks, and they would probably come out different. So the hook can affect our gauge, and you might be using a different hook than the designer. So it's worth changing hooks sometimes to see how to best meet that gauge. If you're not sure what hook to choose, I have a blog post on the best crochet hooks and to know what ones to try. Now, the other thing I want to mention is possibly measuring your hook. I have had hooks before, especially in the Furls Odyssey line, that are incorrect to the way that they are labeled. Um, it will some some of them are off by one to two hook sizes. It may have just gotten the wrong label on there. So if you're really not sure, you can get one of these nifty tools to check your hook, or a lot of these um, measurement tools will also have areas where you can also stick your hook in to see if the hook size you have is actually what it is labeled as. Now here we go with the number one question I always get asked, and that is, can I use a yarn substitute? My first answer is always yes. That's the short answer. Yes, you can always take a yarn and say, will this yarn work instead of this? Yeah, most of the time it can work, but there are some things you want to be conscious of to see if you actually like the way that it works. It's more about if you like the substitution versus if you can do the substitution. So the first thing you'll need to do is grab your substitute yarn and make a gauge swatch. Make sure that you can match the gauge, especially when it comes to a garment. If you cannot, then that is not a good substitute. If you can, then you want to move on to drape. Sometimes I can match the gauge with a substitute yarn, but when I pick up the fabric, I may not actually like the lay of the fabric. It might be too stiff or too loose. So you'll want to make a swatch with the substitute yarn and then play with it. Do you like the feel of it? Is it too stiff? 
Is it too loose? Is it going to be a great garment to wear with that substitute? And is it going to look similar to the product that I'm looking at on the pattern? And if you think yes, go for it. Use that substitute. When it comes right down to it, a gauge swatch is never something you want to skip. You always want to do it to make sure that your hard work is worth it and you love the outcome of the item you're making. Now, unless you're doing home decor projects, which often don't need to be so worrisome with gauge, when we're doing a washcloth, if it comes out slightly um, wider or taller, we don't tend to mind. It works out great. But anything with a garment, I never, ever would recommend skipping this gauge swatch. It's easy, but so important. To read about gauge swatches, be sure to visit my blog, subscribe to my channel, and I'll be back with more tutorials soon.